What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition Power Gamers Tactics Room. I'm your host, Bill Brian Bafflestone. So today we're having another episode of my Deep Dive series, this time looking at optimizing the samurai. This is part two of the samurai segment of my larger 28-part fighter series, so we are going to dive deep into its mechanics and see what kind of leverage points we can find to make a really good samurai for our character build series tomorrow. Before we begin, I'd like to thank all of my Patreon supporters. Feel free to check it out if you want to support the channel. Uh, like, subscribe, all of that stuff. That said, let's take a look. So the samurai get a bonus proficiency. This has a very nice roleplay aspect to it. Uh, it gives the uh, power suite the feel of a samurai, in my opinion. It's a refined, noble warrior, so it makes sense to have a few of these options. It is interaction phase impact only, but it's a nice add. I'd say that the extra language option is probably suboptimal. There's just tons of ways to, uh, you know, to translate available to the party, probably. I mean, depends on party construction. But of the options, I like persuasion and insight the best, and probably persuasion is the most optimal since it has synergy with elegant courtier. So fighting spirit, of course, is the core of this class. And the clear purpose of this ability is to create a powerful, self-generated Nova. The bonus action to activate does incentivize weapons with high damage dice, as the bonus action attack is unavailable. Specifically, that makes Crossbow Expert and Crossbow less appealing versus, say, Elven Accuracy and Longbow, if you are doing a ranged samurai build. Now, you can't do Fighting Spirit too often, only three times per day, so the small number of uses does mean the bonus action is generally available. So there is some, but not much, clog when adding additional bonus action abilities. The temporary hit points are nice and significant in Tier 1, but they gradually fade in power until level 10 when they do get a nice boost. Be aware there are a lot of ways to add temporary hit points now in the game, so this ability could potentially clog with other such abilities. And at level 1 through 9, the Samurai should always and only use their Fighting Spirit with Action Surge. Assuming two short rests per day, that's going to grant you three uses of each one of those abilities, so you're going to want to combine them. And spreading out the uses of Fighting Spirit also maximizes the temporary hit point aspect of the ability. Should also point out that self-generated advantage is excellent from very long range. There are a few means of party-generated attacks at advantage under those conditions, but I must also point out that self-generated attacks at advantage can be marginalized based on party construction. Many parties will have means of generating attacks at advantage, making the self-generated powers of the samurai redundant, and many parties will use heavy obscurement, which is going to eliminate any attacks at advantage. Tactically, that means that fighting spirit may be most impactful when the samurai wins initiative, and can Nova immediately. Then the party members start throwing up their heavy obscurement or whatever, and in round two, the samurai can then seek to benefit from these party synergies. Therefore, the samurai may wish to buff their initiative through the alert feat, weapon of warning, or a dip into a class with an initiative bonus. That way they can get their attack and Nova off in round one, and then kind of, you know, coordinate with the party a little better from that point forward. In regards to Elegant Courtier, it's a passive ability, so not much to say except to enjoy it. Don't pick up Wisdom saves through other means, as adding Intelligence or Charisma saves are a lot less impressive. And make sure you have the Persuasion proficiency. You can get it at third level. Once you get Tireless Spirit, it is now optimal to use all of your three base Fighting Spirits in the first battle of the day, so that's going to be some impressive damage. The only downside is that you don't want to stack your temporary hit points. You're going to need to manage that to avoid wasting them. But then you're going to be able to get your one Nova per battle for the rest of the day. And that's going to be fun for players, though mechanically unimpressive in my opinion when you're talking about all of the rounds in a thousand battles. And getting the temporary hit points in every battle is a very nice defensive bump. When it comes to Rapid Strike, Hey, it's awesome. Very strong bump to DPR, so worth adding as soon as possible, although it is a 15th level ability, so it's going to take a while regardless. And 
Note that besides fighting spirit, it also benefits from any and all additional means of attacking at advantage. So the familiar help action, blind fighting experiment, flanking, all of the ways that you can get attacks at advantage, you can benefit from those. And then strength before death. It's thematically cool, makes the samurai very hard to kill. When triggered, it just creates insane one round damage output. And hey, it encourages reckless play but will create some great hero moments. So it's a very cool ability. Again, I don't value it as much as always on stuff, but it is very nice. So all of those abilities were pretty straightforward mechanically. Optimizing the samurai is more of a holistic matter, I think. So let's make some general observations here. First, I think there are some very strong role-playing expectations wrapped up in the very character concept of samurai. It's not quite as general as most of the other archetypes. And so as part of this character concept, it does offer strong interaction phase abilities. It could viably be the party face, but that does force them to spread their stats around. You can't go with full combat stats. So it might be better to leave the party face thing to a charisma based PC, but it is interesting from a role playing perspective. Furthermore, the traditional combat styles associated with samurai from a role-playing perspective encourage certain weapons, specifically the longbow over the crossbow. It's a nice touch, I think, that this is mechanically favored as well. And for the melee weapons, I think it's just up to DM discretion as to how he chooses to reskin them. Is a katana a longsword or a rapier? Really going to depend from table to table. Mechanically, this archetype is going to appeal to players who are primarily focused on DPR. They get really excited when they have that massive burst damage in one, in one round, because all of the combat abilities are centered around enhancing damage, particularly Nova damage. There is no versatility going on here. Oddly, for a team game, it honestly seems to be built as a loner type. It has no party support options. The self-generated Nova uh, is maximized in effectiveness in the context of low party support. Its abilities are significantly marginalized if the party regularly generates attacks at advantage or uses heavy obscurement. And the fact that it works really well with long range sniping also isn't a party optimal strategy. So I do think it's better in small parties that lack those synergies, but still just kind of a weird design thing going on here, in my opinion. Also oddly, for a game mostly played in tiers 1 and 2, the power curve surges in late tier 3. Once you get to level 15 is where you really start to gain steam. And so, in my opinion, this makes the Samurai a bad option for most games. Only about 50% of games pass level 10, and only about 25% more pass uh, level 15. So honestly, a Samurai to me seems better for a campaign or a one-shot that starts in tier three, and then you can skip all of those bad early levels. Now, because it has these interaction phase abilities, it does incentivize the player to not dump wisdom or charisma. And if you choose to go that route, then the stat distribution opens up multi-class opportunities. So think about these during character creation so you can make sure to get the right stat to 13 that you want to, that will allow you to multi-class in the direction that you want to go. Although I do want to point out that the Samurai is an excellent archetype to take all the way to level 20 because extra attack times 3 is particularly lethal with the Samurai Power Suite. But it is boring to play and not well-rounded in combat, so you may choose to multi-class. I think Paladins, Clerics, and Warlocks offer strong role-playing synergies with the Samurai because they're all service-based character concepts serving lords. And I have seen a few rogue multi-class builds out there, but personally I find that offers poor role-playing synergies with the Samurai because sneak attack is just not very honorable, right? I feel like that's not the sort of thing that a Samurai would consider, uh, but that's just me. And if you do multi-class, you may be able to take advantage of being able to push your combat stats into Wisdom or Charisma, for example, through Hex Warrior or using a Shillelagh. So the role-playing considerations plus bonus action clog with Fighting Spirit during the Nova round discourages the use of Crossbow Expert and Polar Master. Though I do want to point out the bonus action is available in all rounds after Fighting Spirit is expended, so these feats are still good. I do think Polar Master has better synergy than Crossbow Expert, 
however, as the main attack is heavy damage. So that's going to maximize the power of the Fighting Spirit Nova and still retains the lesser bonus action attack option during non-Fighting Spirit rounds. So most builds out there focus on maximizing high damage weapons in Tier 3 plus, typically uh, the Nodachi or Longbow, and the Spike build seems to be Elf Race, probably Eladrin or Shatterkai, plus Sharpshooter at 4th level and Elven Accuracy at 6th level, and then plus 2 decks at 8th level. And I will talk about that build more tomorrow when I do my character build series, but this is relatively weak in tiers 1 and 2. If you run the numbers compared to Battle Masters and Champions and stuff with similar setups, the Samurai isn't as good in tier 1 and 2, and it starts to approach parity at level 11 when they get Tireless Spirit and Extra Attack times 2. And once they add Rapid Strike at level 15, it does reach superiority, and it can get pretty amazing at level 20 with Extra Attack times 3, and they have Strength Before Death, so that can be really impressive. And mechanically, it is worth pointing out that the Samurai gets a high number of attacks, and they get a lot of attacks at advantage. So this acts as force multipliers for powerful weapons. If you have a Flame Tongue, or if you have access to Elemental Weapon or Holy Weapon, that's going to be a significant increase in DPR. So worth considering during character or party construction, if you have the ability to uh, get, say, like a high-level Elemental Weapon or Holy Weapon, uh, that's going to really, really be a powerful combination. So that's it. That's my deep dive of the Samurai Power Suite. It's pretty mechanically straightforward, and so uh, I do have some ideas of how I want to construct one for my character build series tomorrow, and I will include the uh, spike build that uh, kind of, you know, probably provides a baseline for the uh, Samurai in terms of combat effectiveness. Uh, my own build, of course, will be a, a little bit deviant, and I'll try and put a kooky spin on it. So let me know what you think about the Samurai in the comments below. Regardless, thank you so much for watching. This has been the Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition Power Gamers Tactics Room. I'm your host, Bill Baplestone. See you next time.